Augustus is dead. For the time being, at least, the command of the Roman Empire devolves on Tiberius. For the time being? What does he mean by that? He assures me I'm still to be regarded as his legal heir and successor in accordance with Augustus's express wish. What are you going to do? Announce it to the army and declare a period of mourning. And what else? You have to decide. Are you willing to wait? Augustus is dead. Yes. What are we waiting for? Yes. Now's the time to tell them what we want and get what we want. Yes. 20 years service. It's yes. too long. Yes. It only used to be 16. Yes. We wanted 16 again. Yes. We won't get our rights from Tiberius. Oh, no. You know what we ought to do? Yes. Make Germanicus emperor! The commander of the Praetorian Guard, Lucius Helius Sejanus. Tiberius Caesar. Tiberius is enough. I have assumed no new titles. By whatever name you choose, and the choice is yours, I come to swear allegiance to your person, allegiance unto death. I swear this for myself and for the officers and men of the Praetorian Guard. Thank you, Sir Janus. I accept it provisionally. Provisionally? The guard's allegiance is to the emperor. There is at the moment no emperor. Only myself in temporary charge until the Senate decides what is to be done. The guards owe their loyalty not to the Senate, but to one man. And you are that man, Tiberius, until events prove otherwise. Yes, I agree to that. I hope and believe events will not prove otherwise. We shall see. In the meantime, you will provide me with a body of men for my personal escort. As for Augustus? As for Augustus, I see no reason to alter the arrangement. None at all. May I take it that from now on you will give me the nightly watchword for the guard? It was given in the past by Augustus. It was one of the Emperor's prerogatives. If there is no one else, there is only you. The consuls, Sextus Pompeius and Sextus Apuleius. Stay with us, Sir Janus. Caesar, we come to swear allegiance to yourself. As consuls elected by the citizens of Rome. Gentlemen, you are too kind and rather too premature, but in any case, thank you. Premature? Uh, shall we make ourselves comfortable and talk like reasonable men? Yeah. You won't mind if Drusus joins us, uh, not as my son, but as consul elect for next year. Of course. Uh, Christmas. I may need your advice. And, Sir Janus, I think there's one point that concerns you. Do sit down, all of you. Under my powers as a tribune, I propose calling a meeting of the Senate. Yes, good. I was going to suggest that you... Forgive me, you were going to suggest? Um, a meeting of the Senate. At which we shall read out Augustus's will. I should tell you there are no great surprises in it. Legacies to relatives and to the most important men in the state, yourselves included, I need hardly say. Legacies to the nation and to the people of Rome, etc. The remainder, one third to the Empress Livia, who is adopted into the Emperor's family under the name of Augusta, and two-thirds to myself. That is rather as we thought. I'm glad. After the reading of the will, no doubt the Senate will wish to discuss the arrangements for the state funeral of the Emperor. Indeed. Which I shall put forward in draft form for the Senate's approval. Good, good. With that, the meeting will close. What? We ourselves had thought. Had thought? We intend to put a motion before the Senate 
a decree proclaiming you emperor in succession to Augustus. Yes. I do not propose to assume any state business other than that of arranging my stepfather's funeral. The state needs a head, Tiberius. The state has two heads already, these two gentlemen, the elected consuls. I have no powers except in my function as commander-in-chief of the army and my tribune's power, which gives me the right of veto on any motion put before the Senate. If we did put such a motion, would you veto it? I dislike the use of the veto. I should infinitely prefer you not to put the motion. Since you wish us to withdraw Not that I have any right even to indicate what the consul should or should not do. Then you mustn't mind if the rest of us give our opinions to the consuls. Gentlemen, do you think that some degree, conferring at least some additional powers, Drusus? It might be wise. Nature abhors a vacuum. Where is the vacuum? We have a Senate to make our laws, consuls to see that they're obeyed, and the army to intervene in cases of grave disobedience. Which reminds me, Drusus, you have a division stationed near Rome. Yes, Father. I should like them brought into the city for the day of the funeral. That is, if the consuls agree. Oh, oh yes. To yes. prevent any possible disturbances. The Romans tend to become emotional on these occasions. <laughs> <laughs> the route of the funeral itself will be lined with the Praetorian guards. I'll arrange it. Yes, a good idea. The Senate's all on your side, Tiberius, but the mob in the streets... Already there have been demonstrations in favour of... In favour of? Germanicus. Is that so? You'll surprise me. I'm afraid it's true. A pity Germanicus isn't here himself. He'd soon put a stop to it. We must simply do our best without him. Commanding, you call yourself? We're commanding this company now. Yeah. Yeah. This way over there. Bring him up. Get 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 him up. All right, yeah. tie him up here. You know how you had it done to you often enough. And tie him tight. I don't want him to slip. Now, where's, that? where's that lash of his? For old time's sake, I'll go first. Uh, One, two, three, four, five! Germanicus! 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 All four of those brigades completely out of control. Flogging their officers, then throwing them out of the camp more dead than alive, or into the Rhine. It's Newton. The worst I've ever seen. The only one thing that might excuse it is what? They're shouting for you. Do they want to flog me too? They want you for emperor. Emperor of the mutineers. You know the sort of men they are. Half of them old sweat serving out their time. Barrack room lawyers, every one of them. The other half conscripts. The riffraff of Rome. The whole lot of them stupid, can't see further than their noses. They get their fatigues and floggings given them by their company officers, so they're the ones to blame for it. It's got nothing to do with you. They don't even think you know what happens. You're just a great god they see sometimes trotting by on a white charger. You're the one who could put things right. All you have to do is descend from the heavens. Why should they want me to be emperor? You're their own particular god, the god of the Rhine army. If you became god of the whole world, you'd see to it they lived on chicken and red wine for the rest of their lives. Not true, of course but it's what they believe. So what do you think I should do? I'm not a politician. I'm a soldier. You're my chief of staff. You're here to advise me. Your duty as general commanding this army is to stamp out the mutiny with all possible speed. Yes. Send for the brigades from Upper Germany. Surround the camp, call on the mutineers to surrender, then execute the ringleaders. Is that your advice? The only alternative is to fall in with their notion of who should be emperor. I can't lead a rabble. No, or the rabble leads you. Whatever you do, you've got to bring them to heel first. All right, I'll talk to them. Good. And order them to be loyal. 
to Tiberius. it has won. Yay! Every other nation has had to learn to its cost how strong our arms are, Yay! how sharp our swords, Yay! the skill, the fortitude, the heroism of the Roman soldier has never been equal, never! will never be equal. Never! But our army is even more highly renowned for one quality, one other quality without which it would never have won a single victory. Tell us. What's that? Discipline. Where is that famous traditional discipline now? The report of what you have done. The sight of you as you stand here before me fill me with shame that I am a Roman. And even greater shame that I am your commander. It is not many days since Augustus died. The father of his country, the ruler of the empire. This was an occasion for mourning, not for mutiny. His appointed heir is the man who was for many years his chief helper, his greatest general. The succession of Tiberius is an occasion for rejoicing, not for rebellion. Many of you older men have served under Tiberius. In Pannonia, in Dalmatia, here in Germany, you know him well. Too well. Step forward, that man. Name, Calicinius, sir. Company, 21st, sir. Brigade, 3rd, sir. Length of service. 22 years, sir. Due for demobilization with gratuity two years ago. Right along the other side. Any complaints you may have will be referred to your commander-in-chief, Tiberius. We don't want Tiberius. We don't trust him. No. We want you. Yes. You are asking me to turn traitor. No. No. I'd sooner kill myself. Death is better than disloyalty. No. Take my sword. It's sharper than yours. I'll come back when you have learnt to obey. God! A mutiny in our army in the Rhine. At the same time, another mutiny in our army of Pannonia. Both for the same apparent reason. Too long service, too many punishments, too little pay. Both sparked off by the death of Augustus. And wondering who is to become emperor? I cannot help on that point. We are not a hereditary monarchy. The title of emperor is awarded or not awarded by the Senate. If only you would indicate willingness. I am not willing. However, my command of the army and the frontier provinces means that I must do something about these mutinies. Gentlemen, may I have your advice? Drusus? Send Sejanus to stamp out one of them and me to stamp out the other. Which to stamp out which? Send me to Germany. Why? It's much the more important of the two. Is that a reason? The Rhine army is three times the size of the one in Pannonia. The mutiny is three times as serious. But those fools in Pannonia won't even think of marching on Rome. They know they don't stand a chance. But in Germany... But in they're... Germany, I have my legal heir and successor, Germanicus, as my representative. And what's he doing? Making loyal speeches to the troops. Melodramatic. I imagine so. And meaningless. On the contrary, full of meaning. He does it to test their reactions. When he says, Tiberius is great, he means, tell me how great you think I am. And when he says you must not rebel, he means, if it came to a real rebellion, could I depend on you? Is he so subtle? He's better than subtle. He's instinctive. Dismiss him and send me to replace him. Have my son supersede my legal heir, Crispus? He would give rise to charges of favouritism. Which I cannot allow. No, Drusus, you must go to Pannonia. Pannonia isn't important. Oh, yes, I assure you that it is. I shall make that very clear in my message to the Senate. 
May I ask how much you are going to tell the Senate? Rome is in grave danger, equal danger from two directions. Do you think it is possible that the senators will lose confidence? What they lose in confidence, they will gain in panic. Oh. Sejanus will go with you as your chief of staff and a hand-picked brigade of the Praetorian Guards. Well, much as I like Sejanus, aren't you overdoing it? We must make sure that you return in triumph. Now, whom or what shall we send to Germany? Germanicus is torn between the possibility of power now if he rebels and the certainty of power in the future if he doesn't. Yes, I agree. What follows from that? One more factor first. Germanicus has a wife, Augustus's granddaughter, who can't wait to be empress and who will urge the immediate path. Yes, Agrippina has never known how to wait. So, whom shall we send? The one and only person with a character stronger than Agrippina. Yourself. I'm not much of a traveller these days. But if you want to stop the mutiny before... Don't you think it, it would be fairer to give Germanicus a chance and let him muddle through on his own? Sir Janus, you've been silent for some time now. I would send Crispus. With troops? No. With what powers? None. Except the power to be charming. Nothing else? Nothing else. You are the ablest statesman of us all. I think you should carry a message about my health. I am not well. In fact, I am not at all well. don't think I'm a fool. They chose me to be ahead of their deputation to the uh, consuls. Yes, Claudius, I know. To ask them for permission to ca carry Augustus's body back into Rome. What other member of Augustus's family would they have dared to approach? I m made a speech lasting half an hour, and the uh, consuls uh, uh, complimented me. It is their business to be polite. We got the privilege. I mean, and the, the knights did. At least they carried the body on the last lap into the city. Yes, I arranged that. It was proper for them to have some part in the proceedings. You arrange everything, don't you? Not quite everything. Uncle. Give me a job. Because I'm your uncle. If you like, I don't uh, care about reasons. Well, I mean, look at my uh, 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 brother Germanicus. He's only four years older than I am. He's already been a uh, uh, consul. Now he's commanding an army. I have never been allowed to do anything. Germanicus was favored by the emperor. I am not emperor. I cannot give jobs. Oh. But that's just a constitutional fiction, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, uh, keeping up the pretense that you're unwilling until the Senate f forces the title onto you, whether you want it or not. I am, in fact, unwilling. You're a very clever man, Uncle. I'm not sure that I like you. Mm, um, but I do admire you enormously. I'm tired of being admired. I'm even more tired of being clever. Oh, but, uh, but when you're clever, you can't ever stop, can you? I mean, you, you just naturally go on thinking how uh, one thing com uh, com uh, combines with another, how one move uh, can, uh, can serve two purposes. Claudius, I shall arrange for the consular regalia to be delivered to your house. Regalia. Yes. But not the uh, job. Only the toys of office. They may help to keep you amused. All the same. Goodbye, Claudius. I know uh, Germanicus is uh, 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 brave and uh, handsome. And I'm a uh, 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 coward. And, uh, and...
But actually, I am more sensible than he is. If I'd been in his job, you wouldn't have had any mutiny. How is he? Asleep. Little guys. Do you think we should send him away? Why? Well, it may get dangerous here. Come away from the cradle. What happened? Oh, I met them. They want the money they say is due to them. Back pay, bonuses and so on. They want all sorts of reforms. And? They want to march on Rome and make me emperor. Which do they want most? Oh, it's all tangled together in their minds. They must want one thing most. If I give them their money, everything else they ask for, they'll follow me wherever I choose to go. If I give them just promises, they'll follow me for a time. I'm not sure how long. But if I give them nothing, they'll quite possibly run berserk and kill me. And you. And him. I've increased the guard on this house from a company to a battalion. Well, what good that'll be if four brigades decide to attack? Give them what they ask for. The army regulations are laid down by the commander-in-chief. Only Tiberius has the power to change them. Everyone knows that. If I do it myself, without Tiberius' agreement, I declare myself a rebel. Declare yourself emperor. March on Rome. I don't know if I dare. Dare? Oh, I don't mean I'm scared of fighting. Or of Tiberius. It's just that I was brought up to believe that Rome is the center of the universe. That Rome itself is supreme, and solid, and sacred. And that the Roman army has a divine mission to go around conquering the world, spreading peace and law and order. I was brought up to believe that power goes to the man who takes it. As my grandfather Augustus took it, no one gave it to him. Then there was peace. After how many years of civil war? Augustus had men his own size to fight against. Brutus, Cassius, Mark Antony. This time it's different. Tiberius isn't that sort of fighter. He's a general who never lost a battle. Who were the enemy? Native tribes with blunt javelins. And he always made sure he outnumbered them three to one. Every good general does that. He knows you have a bigger army here than he has in all Italy. He knows the Romans. I don't mean the Senate. I mean the people, the ordinary people. They don't want him. They want you. It wouldn't be a war. It would be a triumphal procession. Don't underestimate my uncle. He's a very clever man. Oh, yes. Far too clever to fight when he can't win. He'd abdicate before you cross the Alps. <laughs> he might. And he has what he calls a sense of duty. He'd do anything rather than see the Empire and Rome torn in two all over again. And have I a sense of duty? My lord. What? Manius Ennius is here to see you. What news? We went on talking for two hours after you left. At least, they went on talking. The full list of grievances all over again. And in the end? They demand a final answer by tomorrow. Or? They don't know what or is any more than I do. But whatever it is, it's trouble. Even worse than now. So we must decide. One of two things. Either give them what they want, or smash them.
suppose I agree to the more reasonable of their demands and do it in the name of Tiberius, saying that I have his full authority. Germanicus, there are two things that you can do, and that is neither of them. The condition would be, of course, that they return to normal discipline immediately. Well, how can you tell them you have Tiberius's authority? Well, I'd show them a document with his signature. You mean you'd forge it? If you like, yes. Oh. If the men believe the signature, well and good. And if they don't, even better. They'll realize I've taken it on myself to make these reforms. In either case, the mutiny is over. And what happens then? Well, someone's bound to arrive from Rome fairly soon with powers from Tiberius, perhaps Tiberius himself. Whoever it is, he'll just have to confirm what I've agreed. He'll have to. You mistake my meaning. I mean, once the mutiny is over and the men are back under your control, what will you do with them? My dear, we are in conference. My lady. What have you decided? Aeneas and I have worked out what we think will be a very good solution. I have no further news as yet from Germany or from Pannonia. I do not know whether the situation has improved or deteriorated in either place. Until I know, I cannot move. Caesar, the Empire is in danger. I am aware of that. Forgive me, but it cannot be saved by standing still. I agree. That's why we humbly suggest that you should take personal charge. In Germany or in Pannonia? Wherever the greater danger lies. At this moment, I simply don't know. Gentlemen, I have my baggage packed, my staff standing by, my ships in readiness for instant departure. Suppose I sail for Pannonia and tomorrow a cry for help comes from Germanicus or the other way round. Drusus needs reinforcements while I'm halfway up the Rhine. Caesar, you know best. Thank you. It's just that we want to stop all this talk of, of indecision. When I have the information I require, I shall be decisive enough to please everybody. Shall we pass on to the next item? The dedication from the Senate. Ah. Aterius, Scorus, Gallus. I am your servant, as I am the servant of the Senate. What can I do for you? We are appointed by our colleague Caesar to bring you their warmest and most heartfelt greetings. I thank the Senate. And to take this opportunity of pleading with you. How can the Senate plead? The Senate may command. Of uh, asking you then to change your mind and permit the passing of a decree naming you emperor. The Senate is Rome's governing body. I shall never prevent it from passing any decree that it wishes to pass. Good. Then we shall but report I to... shall not accept the title or the powers of emperor. What? Why not? I am old, I am tired, I am not a god, as Augustus was a god. The task is beyond me. I must refuse it. But since the motion is to be put, and if I heard you right, you will promise not to veto it. We may hope, may we not? And since you are obedient to the Senate's commands... The Empire needs you, Caesar. The Empire is a monster. It wishes to eat me alive. I have no desire to be eaten. The Senate will pass the motion unanimously, Caesar. Giving me all the powers that Augustus had. All? Then with the greatest respect, the Senate is a fool. You think that rule by one man is a splendid thing because you've lived under Augustus. I tell you that rule by one man is the most hazardous form of government ever invented. When the ruler has the power to do whatever his whim dictates, then human life and human happiness hang by a rotten thread. Tiberius, we've known you long enough to trust you. You have not known me as an emperor. It changes a man's character. It, not necessarily for the better. It, it removes him from the ranks of mankind. That is why we were right to call Augustus a god. He was certainly not human. Tiberius, how long must you make us wait? I want to make you understand. We understand one thing. The Empire's in a mess, a dangerous mess, and you're the only man that can pull us out of it. You know me, I put things bluntly. You've got to take charge whether you like it or not. I am not good enough. Then who is? No one. Where does that lead us? To an old and honorable form of government in which the tasks are divided among a number of people. You don't mean that? My life would be much simpler, Gallus, if people would believe that I mean what I say. Divided? How divided? Well, for example, Italy one part, the frontier provinces another, the army another... All right, then, just let us know what part you want for yourself. What I mean is, it's ridiculous. You can't cut up the empire into pieces. It's one thing to be controlled from one place by one brain. Look what's happening now. 
Suppose the troops on the frontier start marching into Italy. Suppose Germanicus takes it into his head to do God knows what. You can't stop a thing like that by having one man in charge of this and another man in charge of that. He puts it clumsily, Caesar, but he's right. Caesar, we entreat you to take into your hands the destiny of this great nation and deliver it from divisions, enmity and civil strife. Everything they've said, Caesar, we as consuls entirely agree with. The Senate implores you. If I give way a little, may I have a little peace? How much are you giving way? Put your motion if you will, pass it if you must. I do not yet promise to accept. Tiberius particularly wanted me to ask after the health of your young son. How kind. Gaius is very well. <laughs> the soldiers call him Caligula. Caligula, why? Little boots. We made him a tiny uniform with boots, the exact model of the army ones. He wears them when his mother shows them in public. How charming. The fish was delicious. Do you catch it in the Rhine? Yes. The price of fish in Rome these days. A gold coin for a mullet. You must tell us all the news from Rome. Of course. Half the reason for my coming here. You know what a gossip I am. <laughs> Is it safe to be indiscreet? <laughs> Leave us. It's simply that in other people's houses one never knows. We particularly made the party small so that you could talk freely. Well, then, the news from Rome, where shall I start? At the top? As you like. The most extraordinary thing, practically every day, the consuls, the senate, and the college of priests, and God knows who, come traipsing up to the palace and beg Tiberius to be the emperor. And he refuses. Well, surely this is the proper thing. A decent show of reluctance before accepting. Presumably he'll accept sooner or later. He's gone on for so long now, people are beginning to doubt it. Do you know what I think? No. What? I think he's in earnest. Can any man refuse the chance of being emperor? Tiberius is a strange character. I'm absolutely convinced that under that arrogant exterior of his, he conceals a profound sense of his own unworthiness. He certainly conceals it. Oh, well, he conceals everything. Oh, well, if you ask him what two and two make, he will give you an evasive answer. But I'm beginning to know him a little better now. And if you were to ask me his chief characteristic, I think I should say self-distrust. Oh, but surely he's always wanted to be emperor. It's what he's waited for all his life. But always knowing that Augustus never really wanted him, that his reign, so to speak, would be an interregnum between Augustus and you. But is he going to accept? My opinion, <clears throat> for what it is worth, is that he will accept on a limited, conditional and temporary basis for a year, perhaps two, and then quietly settle down. Has he said this? Well, you know, Tiberius, he doesn't say things. You have to divine them. May I say something in confidence? Oh, it would remain confidential. Tiberius is in a poor state of health. His eyesight is going, he's almost as blind as a bat, and he has internal troubles. With that terrible conceit of his and pride, he doesn't want people to know, but all he really wants is to shut himself up in his villa on Capri and quietly die. As soon as he can leave the empire in safe hands, and in good order too, and he'd hardly say that he's very distressed with these mutinies. Well, I think we have ours almost under control. Oh, good. The men are conforming to normal discipline. Uh, not yet. Oh? They're still being a bit troublesome, even though I've... I've done my best. I'm sure. Uh, Crispus, may I ask what powers Tiberius gave you as his emissary? Powers? Why? Well, the men had certain justified grievances about pay and service and so on. I've given them the money that was due to them. From what? from the general funds. I've made certain reforms in length of service before discharge. Reforms? Well, naturally, the men are anxious to know that these reforms are agreed by Rome. Well, they're aware that you've been sent here by Tiberius. I trust he gave you full powers to confirm. Powers? Oh, dear me, no. No powers at all. Agrippina, how charmingly you've done this place. Or was it like this when you first came? Well, there were certain improvements we had to make. Would you like to come and look at something? Yes, indeed, I would. So I was quite right not to plunge into a full-scale rebellion. 
Well, now we must clear up the mutiny as quickly as we can. How? It was touch and go when we got there. <clears throat> if we hadn't had the guards with us, we'd probably have been murdered. You know, they wanted me to agree to everything straight away. 16 years service, increased rates of pay, all sorts of reforms. And when I said I'd have to refer these questions to you, I thought they were going to rush me and cut me to pieces. You know, that night we didn't take our boots off. And then this extraordinary stroke of luck. The eclipse of the moon. Well, you know what superstitious fool soldiers are. They thought that heaven had turned against them, so Sir James, he said... Sent some of my guards to mingle with them and talk with them. Yes, it means the moon goddess is displeased. She's withdrawn her light from you. Work like a charm. Next day, all I had to do was to promise them a merciful hearing for their grievances without granting anything at all, and I had the meeting out of my hand. A merciful hearing? Well, of course, I had the ringleaders executed. How many? Well, how many was it, Sir James? Thirty-eight. All necessary deaths? Everyone who had a hand in starting the rebellion. And all those books. One or two may have been unlucky. Executed in public. All the troops drawn up on parade. We made quite a production of it. It had a very good effect. I imagine. And that was that. No more trouble, so we came back to Rome. More wine? Thank you, Father. How's Germanicus getting on? Badly, I hope. Well, I hope. I'm sorry, I... Germanicus is my heir and a popular hero. It is entirely desirable that he should be known to have put down his army's mutiny by himself without any interference from me. I shall make a personal appeal to them. I shall appeal to their loyalty to me. They're waiting to be told your emperor. They must be as loyal to me as I am to Tiberius. You believe what Crispus said? On the whole, yes. Maybe lies. Maybe exaggeration. But Crispus is far too shrewd to tell an absolute lie. This distance from Rome, any falsehood is safe. Only for a time. Long enough to make you change your mind. Change my mind? I have not spoken one word against Tiberius, have I? No. I swore to die rather than to be a traitor. Yes. Well, then? In public. And in private. What have your dreams been, Germanicus? Suppose I march on Rome and fail. Suppose you succeed. Well, then I may eventually make a very good emperor, but only after the worst possible start. If, if you stand by Tiberius, how long will you really have to wait? I shall wait fairly contentedly. Having done what I know is the right thing to do. How can you... Darling, I cannot go against my own instincts. I suppose the moment is past. Support me, then. Help me. Tomorrow I shall need all the inspiration I can find. Agree with me. We are going to be loyal. We've decided to be patient. Yes, I agree. Come with me tomorrow when I talk to them. If you think it would help. Oh, to the soldiers, you're almost a divinity. Granddaughter of Augustus the God. Mother of the God's great-grandson. No, don't come with me. But I think I know what I shall say to them. My wife and child are dear to me, yes. but not dearer than my country. Oh. Nothing is closer to my heart than Rome and the Roman Empire. Yes. 
The empire which you, the Roman army, have conquered, uh, have won, yes. have built with your own hands. Yes. I would willingly see my wife and child die if it led to your greater glory and the greater glory of the empire which you yourselves have made. But how can I talk of glory at a moment like this? I have listened to your requests. I have granted those of them that were reasonable on behalf of your commander-in-chief Tiberius and with his approval. But still you will not be soldiers. Still you are mutineers. Very well. I cannot trust you. And as a sign of my distrust, I am sending away my wife, granddaughter of the divine Augustus, and my son, Augustus's great-grandchild. They are no longer safe here where they should be safe. I am sending them to the care of foreigners. In Gaul! Soldiers are simple people. But then aren't we all? If I were listening to Germanicus myself, I'd be in floods of tears by now. When did you last cry? Well, I really can't remember. It's quite some time ago. Fifty years? But Germanicus is a splendid speaker. He touches the heartstrings. I begged him to let me listen. He thought better not. He was right. Of course. The men might ask awkward questions, which I have no authority to answer. No, you're only a servant. It comes natural to me. I served your grandfather very well. And my brother, Agrippa? It was not possible to combine the two. I served your grandfather. You will not serve me. I ask you not to dislike me. Everything that is happening is for the best. For Germanicus? <laughs> for the health of the body politic, which includes Germanicus and that of your son. Uh, I had them begging for mercy and imploring me to lead them not against Rome, but against the Germans. I was saying to Agrippina, you are a remarkable speaker. Your name did more than my words. Your name and his. Caligula. The human touch and the divine. They pleaded with me to let you stay. Then we shall stay. Oh, no. I've told them you're going and you must leave now while they're in this mood. Must I? Must I, Germanicus? It'll finish off the mutiny once and for all. The sight of you and him. Are you ready? Yes. Right. Is the escort ready? In a moment. Is it too soon to offer congratulations? It's all over. Except, of course, for the punishments. Oh, yes. The most awkward part of the whole business and the most painful. For whom? You. Necessities are always painful. And punishments are never popular. Well, these may be. Ennius! The ringleaders. I assume we execute them. Do you want me to arrange it? I want them to arrange it themselves. And to carry it out themselves. What? Well, it's their responsibility, not mine. Each company must clear its own name of the charge of disloyalty.
<coughs> well, well, good evening, Uncle. You wanted me. Claudius, it is reported to me that you spend much of your time drinking and gambling in taverns with slaves. Oh. Is it true? Well, uh, not only with slaves. With servants, then? <laughs> All sorts. Uh, uh, mm, mm, uh, do you want to know why? Why is self-justification? I never want to know why. Well, if you uh, 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 gave me something to do. Are you drunk now? Yes. You have something to be, which is more than enough for most people. Uh, a member of the royal family. Of Augustus's family. Oh, my own. Disgrace. You're worse. You're a laughing stock. Well, why not? Every family has one fool in it. Why not ours? I mean, they, they've got enough to admire you being so uh, 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 clever. And Germanicus. So uh, 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 brave and handsome and uh, whatever else he is. <coughs> I'm concerned with the business of good government. Government cannot work unless the rulers are respected and those who are close to them. You uh, uh, don't think uh, rulers should be uh, loved because they're human with human weaknesses? Love is not necessary. Respect is. Have you ever loved anyone, Uncle? Not recently. Oh. What um, must I do to be uh, respected? Retire to your country villa for a time. <laughs> Out of sight. You're my nephew. It's too close for comfort. And a, uh, uh, a brother of your successor. Yes. Will he? I mean, uh, succeed you? Germanicus is my heir. Uh, but, uh, but will you let him? Really? I don't mean now. I mean ever. When he has learnt? Uh, do you think he'll ever learn? I think he's in the process of learning. All guilty? I've no idea. I should think the men took the chance to settle a few old grudges. I can stand the sight of men killed in battle. This. Don't go any further, then. This lot's only one company. I'll have them burnt. I hadn't expected so many. Hadn't you? But in principle, I was right to let them do it themselves. It made them feel their responsibility. Well, Tiberius will indeed be glad to know the mutiny is over. I was right, wasn't I? The mutiny is over. Do you disapprove? Germanicus, I told you at the beginning you could do two things. You did neither of them. Only one man has done well out of this affair, Tiberius. I shall take the opportunity of reporting to the whole Senate the successful conclusion of events in Pannonia and in Germany without my presence being needed in either place. I shall also ask the Senate to consider what might be done to reward the achievements of Drusus and of Germanicus. The speed with which Drusus acted is worthy of the highest praise. Yes, yes indeed. indeed. We must give equal praise to the efforts of Germanicus, who moved yes. rather more slowly towards the same result. I shall have to mention to the Senate that Germanicus made certain concessions to the troops, which I must now reluctantly confirm. No doubt he had his reasons. Is there any other business? I see the delegation from the Senate is here yet again, again and again and again, and always on the same errand. To ask me to accept the title of Emperor. Yes. 
Caesar, if I may speak for my fellow senators and for the entire nation which has watched your steady hand at the helm... Thank you, the... Heterius, but I have heard your arguments more than once, and you have heard mine. We are patient, Caesar, and obstinate. Augustus was awarded the title of emperor, not for life, but for a fixed period of years. Which was renewed for a further term, and then for a further. Since I am old and tired and unwilling, the question of a fixed period need not arise. The burden is a heavy one. I shall lay it down as soon as I can. But you accept? At your insistence, I am prepared to accept the title and powers of emperor for the time being. Ah. For an indefinite period. That is another way of putting it. Guards! 